In my video today, I'm going to talk about summary hearing and I'm going to offer some guidance to individuals who have to appear before their commanding officer at summary hearing. The first point to say is that at summary hearing, an individual is not entitled to have legal representation present. So they cannot bring a defence lawyer to the CO's summary hearing in the same way that they could bring a lawyer to the magistrate's court in the civilian system. That presents an individual going in front of their commanding officer at some disadvantage, not least because the commanding officer is of a rank of normally lieutenant colonel and the individual will frequently be of much junior rank. Nonetheless, an individual cannot bring a lawyer with them to summary hearing. They can consult a lawyer beforehand, they can have a lawyer prepare the matter beforehand for them, but they cannot bring the lawyer with them to summary hearing. They should be appointed a, an a assisting officer. That should be an individual of the rank of at least sergeant in the army. And the individual should be offered a choice of at least two assisting officers, providing the assisting officer is willing to help, is willing to act as an assisting officer, then the individual can bring an assisting officer to help them at the summary hearing, possibly present evidence, possibly present argument. However, the individual can consult with a lawyer before the summary hearing if they wish. At the summary hearing, the first matter that needs to be dealt with is whether the individual wishes to elect court-martial or whether they are willing to accept the commanding officer's jurisdiction. And in this video, I am going to assume that the individual has decided not to elect court-martial, but has decided to accept the commanding officer's summary jurisdiction. And, of course, the reason for that, there may be numerous reasons, and I've covered these in previous videos, but one example may be that they wish to see how matters go with the commanding officer in the knowledge that if the commanding officer finds them guilty, they can take the matter, they have an unfettered right to take the matter to the summary appeal court. So effectively they have two opportunities, whereas at court martial normally just the one opportunity. So how can an individual best present their case in front of a commanding officer? Well an individual needs to prepare. Uh, they can uh, consult uh, with the uh, service codes, they can consult the rules, they can seek to um, take evidence from individuals, take witness statements, call individuals to give evidence at the summary hearing if they wish, they can challenge the evidence that is presented at the summary hearing by the prosecution, by the individuals making the allegation, they can seek to admit evidence of what was said at interview under caution, if indeed there was an interview under caution, and they can present any physical evidence that they wish. So there is a considerable amount of material preparation that an individual can do to prepare for summary hearing. They can take notes and it's advisable to do so to plan in advance what is to be said, what questions are to be asked, what submissions are to be made. It may be that the individuals presenting the case, or indeed the commanding officer hearing the case, or the assisting officer are themselves in some way involved in the case. And in that, if that is the position, the individual needs to make representations as to why it's not appropriate for those particular people to be in the uh, positions that they are. It may also be necessary to argue that the individual has not been given sufficient time. The rule is they should have at least 24 hours notice. However, the more serious the allegation is, it's fair to argue that they should be given longer to prepare beforehand. If they haven't had the opportunity to gather witness statements, or to gather evidence, or to speak to individuals, or to conduct site visits. It's necessary to present those arguments to the commanding officer and politely but firmly argue that the matter should be adjourned in order for that preparation to be undertaken. Now if the commanding officer insists on going ahead, 
it would be advisable to make a record, a note, and ask that note be taken that the application has been made and the reasons for the application being made and the reasons for any decision not to allow the application. It's important also to consider the test, and the test is the same in the summary hearing in front of the commanding officer as it would be in the Crown Court or the Court Martial. It is beyond reasonable doubt. Commanding officers regularly deal with Ag I-67. Major Ag I-67, the test is on a balance of probabilities. That is not the test used at summary hearing. The test at summary hearing is beyond reasonable doubt. So the commanding officer needs to be convinced beyond reasonable doubt that the individual is guilty of the allegations that have been made against them. The individual has the opportunity to cross-examine any witnesses against them and to put their own witnesses to the court martial to the commanding officer at summary hearing. The individual has the right to make written submissions, legal argument, that might be about admissibility of evidence, it might be about procedural unfairness. An individual can consult with a lawyer about all these matters beforehand so that they are prepared. If the matter then goes against the individual, if the commanding officer concludes that they are guilty of the offence alleged, then the individual has the unfettered automatic right to apply for the matter to go in front of the Summary Appeal Court.